Uh, good morning, uh, dear students. Welcome to another session of uh, microwave and antenna. So in uh, yesterday's uh, session, uh, we uh, saw few of the cases pertaining to two isotropic point sources. And uh, then uh, we came down to the condition of linear array of n isotropic point sources, uh, which are having uh, equal amplitude and equal spacing between each other. So this is the uh, geometric orientation of how the sources are placed along the phi equal to zero degrees axis and uh, in this case we are considering source one as the reference point to measure the field total field at a distance r from that reference point so now the field at this uh, distance r from the reference point will be equal to the vector addition of the fields due to all the sources say for example it will be e1 plus e2 plus e3 so on up to E n, where E one, E two, E three are nothing but the fields which are due to source one, source two, source three, and up to source n, respectively. Uh, so the same uh, thing uh, in uh, this case, uh, they have represented it in a slightly different form. So wherein uh, you have a array of n isotropic point sources, they are spaced equally. That is adjacent sources are placed equally with the distance of d between them and source one is considered as the reference point and with respect to this at a distance r what they are doing is they are measuring the total field so now uh, if i make an observation in this case you can just observe that say uh, if i consider the ref uh, the uh, field to be measured at this observation plane so if I uh, just observe what happens is the field due to source n will be leading as compared to source n minus 1 because it traverses a shorter distance compared to the previous source. So if you compare it with the source 1, source 1's field will take a little bit more amount of time. So now uh, this how do I specify? I specify that there is a phase lag between source n and the reference. The field due to source n will be having a phase lead, sorry, uh, will be having a phase lead as compared to the field due to source one, which is the reference point in our case. So similarly, if I uh, compare source n minus one field, it will be leading comparatively to the field due to the source one, which is at the reference point. So in this case, what happens is, uh, if you just uh, apply the same thing to all the rest of the sources, source two's field is leading as compared to source one, source three's field is leading as compared to source two. Uh, but if I compare it with source one, it will be leading say twice in the phase. So similarly, source phase, when I uh, compare, if I compare it with the reference point, it will be leading three times. So here that study we had observed in uh, this derivation. So here, uh, here we had observed it. So what we had specified E1 is equal to E0 into E raised to J0. So this is nothing but sometimes you specify it in this form. That is this one. Field due to source 1 is E0 angle 0 degrees, which is nothing but E raised to J0. Both are one and the same. So this gives you the phase information uh, in R theta form. You can write it in this form or you can write it as R into E raised to J theta form. So that is uh, the implication. So this is having an angle of zero degrees. So this is the reference point. And uh, for uh, reference right uh, of the phase, we make use of psi. So psi is actually equal to what? It is equal to dr cos phi and plus the delta, where delta is the additional phase which is present between the sources. So that uh, again uh, we'll be considering so now uh, here what happens is if this is having uh, because we are considering this as the reference point if the reference if this is at zero degrees then that will this the field due to source two will be leading by psi 
then the phase uh, field due to source three will be leading by psi if you compare it with source two, but I need to compare it with source one. So therefore what happens is field due to source three will be leading by psi plus psi, which is two times psi. So similarly, when I go to source n, what happens is here, it will be leading with three psi. The field at source n will be leading by n minus one times psi. So that is uh, what we had uh, seen in the yesterday's case. So in simplified form, they have written it in this form. That is E1 is equal to E0 angle zero. This is the reference point. E2 is equal to E0 into angle psi, wherein this is specifying that the field due to source uh, due to source two is leading as compared to the reference point that is e1 so e3 is e0 angle 2 psi so we had written it what we had written it in e raised to j 2 psi which is nothing but the same representation e4 is e0 angle 3 psi so similarly when i compare when i want to see what is the field due to source n it is e0 angle so if you just see if it is uh, source 4 it is 4 minus 1 psi if it is source 2 it is 3 minus 1 psi if it is source 2 it is 2 minus 1 which is 1 psi so similarly since this is n this it will be n minus 1 psi so this we write it as e naught into e raised to j n minus 1 psi so uh, we write it either in this form or this form so now uh, that is what we had uh, represented over here. So these were the fields. These were the fields what we had observed, uh, which were due to the respective sources. That is source one, source two, up to source n respectively. Now, what is the total field? Total field is actually the vector addition of all the fields due to this. So this I can write it as E is equal to E1 plus E2 up to some summation of E1, E2, E3 up to En. Now uh, we substitute these values in this equation. So when we substitute these values in this equation, what we have E1 is given as E0 angle 0. So E raised to 0 is 1. So therefore this is E0. E2 is E0 into uh, E raised to j psi plus E3 is E0 into E raised to j 2 times psi. So on up to plus E n, which is E naught into E raised to J n minus one into psi. So now you take E naught common. So when you take E naught common, the equation will be simplified in this form. Now what we do is for simplicity, we can make this equal to one. We can make this equal to one. So wherein we are considering the normalized pattern. We are considering the normalized pattern. So when we do that, what happens is we will be having this equation. So we are normalizing equation two, that is this field. We are normalizing this one by making this equal to one. So we have just simplified it. So I'll be having E equal to given by the equation four. Now this equation itself, I'll multiply it with E raised to J psi. So when I multiply it with e raised to j psi, what I'll be having is this equation four, when you multiply it with e raised to j psi, we'll be having e is e into e raised to j psi, one into e raised to j psi, e raised to j psi into j psi will be e raised to j times two psi and so on. And when we multiply the last element with e raised to j psi, we are left with e raised to j n times psi. So now we are having two equations, equation four and equation five. Now what we do is we subtract e equation four from equation five. So we consider five minus four. So what uh, if we do that, what we'll be having? So here we have uh, on the uh, left hand side, we have E into E raised to J psi minus E. So that is E is common. Therefore, what happens is we'll be having E into E raised to J psi minus one. So similarly, when I consider the other elements, it will be 
uh, it will uh, reduce to e raised to j psi e raised to j psi gets cancelled e raised to j two psi and e raised to j two psi gets cancelled so so on uh, up to e raised to j n minus n minus one psi that is on uh, the parameter before this gets cancelled and what we are left with is we are left with e raised to j n psi e raised to j n psi and minus one so this is the equation what we obtain we when we subtract equation four from equation five uh, now we are interested in finding the electric field so now this electric field is nothing but e is equal to this you take in the denominator part on the right hand side so when you take that we obtain this equation which we have represented as 5a so total electric field due to the n isotropic point sources which are having equal amplitude and equal phase will be reduced to e raised to j n psi minus 1 divided by e raised to j psi minus 1 so this is what we will be obtaining now still i want to simplify uh, this equation then what i do is i try to represent the numerator and denominator since we are having a minus sign over here i try to represent it in the form of sign parameter so how do i do that what i do is i take e raised to j n psi by 2 common out of numerator so when I take e raised to j n psi by 2 common out of the numerator, in the numerator in the bracket part, we will be having e raised to j n psi by 2 minus e raised to j uh, minus j n psi by 2. So if I multiply back this, I should be getting back the same this thing. So if I multiply this with this, I'll be getting e raised to j n psi by 2. And when I multiply this factor with the this parameter, both will be nullifying each other it will be e raised to j0 so when it is e raised to j0 it will be 1 so that is maintained over here so similarly in numerator you take e raised to j psi by 2 common so when you take e raised to j psi by 2 uh, common in the denominator we have e raised to j psi by 2 into e raised to plus j psi by 2 minus e raised to minus j psi by 2 uh, now, uh, since we want to, uh, if we just observe this part, I can represent this in the form of sign. Uh, because if you remember, we have e raised to jx minus e raised to minus jx divided by 2j is nothing but it is sin x. So in this case, what we have, we have in the numerator x is equal to n psi by 2 and the denominator x is equal to psi by 2. Now 2j parameter is pending over here. So what we do is we divide the numerator by 2j and divide the denominator by 2j. Therefore, what happens is no need to worry about any uh, multiplication of any factor by 2j. So if I divide both the numerator and denominator by 2j, so still the equation remains same. So this should be actually 2j that I have uh, missed out. So you just rectify it. So uh, this equation what we have is nothing but sin n psi by 2 and the denominator what I have is nothing but it is sin psi by 2. So therefore, and uh, when we simplify this part, right, what we have e raised to j, this uh, um, this goes on top. So it will be n minus 1 into psi by 2. So it will be e raised to j n psi by 2 into e raised to minus j psi by 2. So when that is the case, we get this parameter. So this is nothing but it is uh, giving you the phase information of the overall field. Now, uh, what we do is... Uh, this part we can uh, represent it, 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 it with one parameter which is uh, termed as say zeta. So zeta is equal to n minus 1 into psi by 2. It is just for simplification purpose. So now uh, what we uh, do is again uh, this can be represented. This can be represented in r theta form. So this is giving you the magnitude information. This is giving you the angle information pertaining to the total electric field. So now uh, in this case, what we can do is if I consider this zeta as the reference, if I consider this as the reference, then what I can do is I can consider this as the electric field. So for simplicity, what we do is we consider this as the reference point and based on that, 
overall field we have estimated it so what we do is this will consider as the reference point therefore what we have is the magnitude of the field at different angles will be given by this parameter so now what i do is i consider the magnitude of this field which is nothing but sin n psi by 2 divided by sin psi by 2 now whenever you consider the magnitude what happens is in this case this is nothing but r angle theta so this is giving you the phase information and r is giving you the magnitude information so therefore you have uh, e given by sin n psi by 2 divided by sin psi by 2 and what is psi in this case psi is dr cos phi plus delta where delta is the additional phase which has been introduced and what is dr that is uh, between the adjacent sources it is the phase difference between the adjacent sources so dr is what dr is given by beta times d where beta is what 2 pi by lambda into d and d is the distance between the adjacent sources so this is uh, the field due to the n isotropic point sources now uh, for this case right i need to identify considering this parameter i need to identify what is the array factor so if you remember array factor is nothing but it is the electric field the, uh, it is the ratio of the electric field divided by the maximum value of the electric field so i'll be considering the the magnitude of this one so this is the electric field what we have and for this n isotropic point sources what is e max what is e max so i need to estimate this so in order to estimate this what we do is we equate this equation for psi tending towards zero if i substitute it directly what happens is i'll be having an indeterminate form so i need to use the limit concepts so here what we do is what we do is as psi tends to zero what happens to this electric field that is what we have to observe so here as psi tends to zero limit as psi tends to zero with respect to the electric field we have to see what is the value in this case it is given as it is equal to uh, n now how it is equal to n so now uh, if you uh, just observe over here So we have uh, this equation so what we have we have e is equal to sin n psi by 2 divided by sin psi by 2 now what i have to do is i have to equate this one as psi tends to zero so this is nothing but limit as psi tends to zero which is sin n psi by 2 divided by sin psi by 2 so now uh, one property of sin uh, this thing is what if i just consider sin x this will be nearly equal to x when x tends towards zero that is when x turns out to be very small so if you want you can estimate it uh, with the help of the calculator also you try to estimate what is the value of uh, sine say 0.9 what is the value of sine 0.09 so as uh, x tends towards zero you can observe that the sine of x when x is very less or x tending towards to zero will be equating equal to x so now that concept we need to apply over here 
So in the numerator, we have what? Sin n psi by 2. So based on uh, based on that uh, a parameter, what we can specify is limit as psi tends to 0, which is E, which is uh, nothing but this case. So in this case, what happens is as psi tends to 0, so this overall parameter will be lesser. It will be uh, say uh, very much closer to zero. So if that is the case, what happens is this equation will be nearly equal to n psi by two. That is sin x is equal to x when x is nearly equal to x when x is very much near to zero. So similarly in denominator, what we have sin psi by two. Since psi is tending towards zero, what we have this equation will be leading towards psi by 2. So therefore, what we have in numerator, we have psi by 2. In uh, denominator, we have psi by 2. We cancel off this. So what we have, we have it equal to n. So this is nothing but the maximum value of the field, which is obtained when you take the limit as psi tends to 0 for the electric field. So Emax is given as equal to n. So this is uh, what we have. So limit as psi tends to zero of electric field will be equated to n because uh, when I equate it, this parameter that is the sin n psi by two will be nearly equal to sin n psi by two and denominator will be nearly equal to psi by 2. These two parameters get cancelled and this will be equated to n. So that is what is given over here. So therefore we have the maximum value of E which is given as n. So now uh, if I have to obtain the normalized value or it is nothing but the array factor in this case, array factor is given as E divided by E max e divided by e max. So now what is e? e is sin n psi by 2 divided by sin psi by 2. And what is e max value? e max value is nothing but this entire equation divided by n. So which is nothing but it equates to this normalized value which is the array factor which is 1 by n into sin n psi by 2 divided by psi by 2. So this is the array factor also and it is also giving you the normalized field pattern value. It is giving you the normalized field pattern value. So here uh, we have solved it. Sin theta is nearly equal to theta when theta is very small. So when you solve that uh, applying that equation you will be having it equal to n. So here we have the array factor. So E is sin n psi by 2 divided by sin psi by 2 and E max is equal to n. So therefore, array factor is sin n psi by 2 divided by sin psi by 2 into 1 by n. So this is the, this is the array factor for the isotropic uh, point sources, linear uh, array of n isotropic point sources. Uh, so next what we have is we have two conditions uh, which are a special case which are special case so here uh, so discuss regarding, uh, let us discuss regarding uh, the broadside array and the end fire array so when do I call the linear and isotropic point sources for the given condition to be a broad side array? So now in a previous discussion, we had uh, discussed regarding uh, in the radiation pattern that we have main lobe, we have side lobe, we have back lobes, we have nulls. So all these things we had discussed. Now here, uh, if you uh, just observe, say the uh, array elements are placed in phi equal to zero direction in phi equal to zero direction. So with respect to this arrangement, if I 
uh, say try to measure at different different angles by keeping the distance constant at different different angles if i measure the uh, radiation then if this radiation gives me a maximum along phi equal to 90 degrees if i get a maximum along phi equal to 90 degrees that is uh, in a direction which is perpendicular to the axis which is holding these n isotopic point sources if i get a maximum that is if i get a main lobe in phi equal to 90 degrees that is along this direction i am having a maximum uh, so here also it can be in this direction and even around minus 90 degrees i can have it so if i am having a maximum along 90 degrees that is phi is equal to 90 degrees plus minus 90 degrees then i call such kind of array as broad side array so the name itself tells that if i consider these arrays on the sideways, I am having the main globes, broad side. I am having the main globes along the sideways, but they are present at phi equal to 90 degrees. They are present at phi equal to plus minus 90 degrees. Now, uh, another case is end fire array, which we term as end fire array. Uh, so we have it uh, over here. So that is, we have it, have the end fire array. So in this case, uh, so again, uh, here another term we have come across, that is peak. Peaks are nothing but the main lobe. Uh, this is called a peak value. This is the peak value. So in which direction I'm having a maximum. So that we term as the peak. So main lobe peak, so these are alternate terms so what we generally refer so in broadside array what was the case we had in the sideways that is at phi equal to zero degrees we had a peak value or the main lobe which was present in this direction but in case of end fire array what happens is if the sources that is the n isotropic point sources are placed along phi equal to zero degrees axis and if I obtain a field pattern in which along phi equal to zero and phi equal to 180 degrees, I get a maximum or a peak or a main low. So it is phi equal to zero and phi equal to 180 degrees. If I get a peak in this form, that is major lobes or the main lobes are present along phi equal to zero degrees and phi equal to 180 degrees, then I term the array arrangement as the end fire array end fire array so here uh, we can observe that for the broadside array what we have peak is present in the perpendicular plane uh, with respect to the axis of the overall array so i had all the array elements placed at a distance along phi equal to zero so here i can see that there is a peak at 90 degrees that is which is perpendicular to this axis so but in uh, the end fire array uh, sorry uh, the, the end fire array what we are having in the end fire array system we have the peaks which are along the axis of the uh, isotropic point sources which are placed along phi equal to zero so this is the axis of the isotropic and, and uh, isotropic uh, sources which are placed so along this direction i am having a peak so I am having a peak along phi equal to zero degrees and phi equal to 180 degrees. So such kind of arrangement, we term it as end fire array. So now another point to note down uh, here is, uh, Uh, so here we have that condition which they have specified.
So for broadside array, what we have is the phase difference between the adjacent sources should be having delta equal to zero degrees. And uh, for end fire array system, right, for the given arrangement, what we have, we, ha we should have delta equal to pi radians or 180 degrees. So here we had uh, utilized this equation, right? Uh, so psi is equal to dr cos phi, where dr is nothing but beta d cos phi plus delta. So if I have to, uh, uh, if directly, if I know that it is a broadside array, I can substitute delta is equal to zero degrees. And if it is an end fire array, I can substitute it as delta equal to 180 degrees. Uh, because what they do is when they want to specify the problem, sometimes they specify that the array is a broadside array. So they'll indirectly give the value of delta. And sometimes they might specify that it is an end fire array. So in that case, we need to consider delta equal to pi radians or 180 degrees. Uh, now, in some cases, it might be different than uh, these. So if that is specified, we need to identify how the pattern appears. So that will be looking in the coming forth session. So one point to remember is for broadside array, delta will be equal to zero degrees. And for end fire array, broadside, uh, sorry, delta will be equal to pi radians or 180 degrees. So when we have this conditions, we'll be having the broadside array and end fire array respectively. problem. So in this problem, what is specified? So it is given that there are four point sources that are spaced lambda by six meter apart. The power applied is applied with equal magnitude or the amplitude and a phase difference of pi by three and the phase difference of pi by three between the adjacent elements. Obtain the field pattern and find its beam width between first null and half power beam width. So now what parameters he has specified? He is giving the details regarding the spacing between the elements. So that is D is lambda by six meter. And how many sources are there? There are around four point sources. So which uh, tells that N is equal to four. And he specifies that the phase difference of be between the adjacent elements is pi by three. So this is giving you the information that delta is pi by three radians. Delta is pi by three radians. What is the field pattern? So we need to draw the field pattern what is the beam width between first null and what is the half power beam width. Now, when we are talking about field pattern, when we are talking about field pattern, we need to identify the direction of maximum or the peak values along which angle I'll be having the peak values, along which angle I'll be having the minimum values, that is uh, angles along which I'll be having nulls. And uh, since I require half power beam width, once we estimate this one, right, we can estimate what is the beam width between first null. And for half power beam width, we need to equate one parameter uh, wherein we, uh, we try to see what is the value for one by square root of two. That is what is the electric field uh, what, uh, for what all angles I'll be having the value of electric field as one by square root of two. So once I obtain those angles using those angles, I try to see what is the half power beam width. 
So now uh, let us uh, move ahead with the problem. So what is psi equal to? Psi is given as dr cos phi plus delta, where dr is nothing but beta times d. So it is beta times d into cos phi plus delta. Now what is delta over here? Delta is pi by 3. So that is being substituted. Now uh, you substitute d is equal to lambda by 6. Now what is beta? Beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda and d is equal to lambda by 6. So when you make the simplification, what happens is beta times d simplifies to pi by 3 into cos phi plus pi by 3. So now what I am having, I am having psi is equal to pi by 3 into 1 plus cos phi. So now uh, we uh, got to know what is the phase with respect to the field representation. So it is psi equal to pi by 3 1 plus cos phi. Now how do I obtain the direction uh, of the maxima and direction of the minima? So we need to estimate those things. Now in order to obtain the direction of the maxima, uh, we can uh, just check out over here. In order to obtain the peaks or the direction of the maxima, we equate psi equal to 0. So here we have what is psi? Psi is given as this parameter. Now here what we do is in order to obtain the direction of maxima or direction of the peak values or the main lobe direction, main lobe direction, I need to estimate the angle. So in order to obtain that, we equate psi equal to 0. So when we equate psi equal to 0, what we have? We have the previous equation that is pi by 3 into 1 plus cos phi will be equal to 0. That is what is presented over here. Now since pi by 3 cannot be equated to 0, we need to equate this one to 0. So therefore we have 1 plus cos phi of 0 and here we are just representing it as phi max because it is just giving me the direction of the maximum when we equate psi equal to 0 we obtain direction of the maximum so it is 1 plus cos phi which is equal to 0 so therefore cos phi is equal to minus 1 and phi max is given as cos inverse of minus 1 so uh, for what all possible values of uh, cos uh, uh, what all values of uh, angles we can have the value of cos as minus 1. So when we simplify this what we have so if you just observe at 0 degrees we have uh, a cos inverse which is equal to sorry at 180 degrees we have cos uh, which is equal to minus 1. So the, therefore what happens is this equation what we are having so if I just consider it as uh, say phi equal to 0. So at 180 degrees, I'll be having a cos value of minus 1. At minus 180 degrees also, I'll be having a value of minus 1. So here what we have, phi is maximum along plus minus 180 degrees or plus minus pi radians or plus minus pi radians. So this is the direction of maximum. So along plus minus 180 degrees, you have the direction of maximum. So we got one condition. Now we need to identify the direction of minimum. Now for identifying the direction of minimum, what we do is we consider the electric field value and we equate the numerator equal to zero. So if you remember what we have, we have we have the total electric field which is given by this equation that is sine n psi by 2 divided by sine psi by 2. So to identify the minimum what we do is we equate sine n psi by 2 equal to 0. So when I equate this I will be getting the information pertaining, pertaining to the directions of the minimum or minima or the side lobes and even the back loops are also included. So this will give me other than the main loops, other than the main loops. 
So now what we have sin n psi by 2 equal to 0. So now I simplify this equation. So in this case, n psi by 2 is equal to sine inverse of sine inverse of 0. So what is this one? I'll be having uh, sine inverse of 0 equated to 0 degrees, 180 degrees. Uh, then again, if I continue, it will be 360 degrees and it will continue. Now, if I measure it in the other way, it will be 0 degrees minus 180 degrees minus 360 degrees. So how do I write this? I write it as plus minus uh, plus minus uh, 0 degrees plus minus uh, so on it continues. So that is this equation sign uh, this equation what we will be having we will be having as plus minus 0 degrees plus minus uh, 180 degrees plus minus 360 degrees so on it will be continuing. So therefore in general what we can write we can write it as plus minus k into pi in, in terms of radians where k is equal to what k will be equal to 0 1 2 and it can continue when it is 0 it will be plus minus 0 actually it will be just a 0 value then when it is 1 it will be plus minus pi radians or it is plus minus 180 degrees when it is 2 it is plus minus 2 pi or it is plus minus 360 degrees so now we are getting this value for n psi by 2 which is equal to plus minus k into pi now we know that n is equal to 4 and psi is equal to pi by 3 into 1 plus cos phi. So substitute that in this equation, these two over here. So when you substitute that, when you substitute and simplify it for phi, so you simplify it for the phi value which is present over here. So what we get is we get 1 plus cos phi is equal to plus minus 3k times 2. So I will be will be simplifying this and we'll be equating it for this parameter. When we equate it for this parameter, we end up with 1 plus cos phi equal to plus minus 3 times k divided by 2. So now uh, what we have, we need to estimate for phi. So here cos phi is equal to minus 1 plus minus 3k by now what happens is uh, you can check out for which all angles. So if I take both minus, if I take both minus, uh, this is already minus, it is already minus. And if I add uh, say minus, minus three by two, this number will be greater than, uh, say if I consider the magnitude, this number will be greater than one. This number will be greater than one. Now can cos of any angle be greater than one? It is not possible. It is not possible. You cannot have any angle, say cos of say phi, I cannot have the value which is greater than one. It will be either, uh, say if I don't consider the magnitude, it will be in the range of minus one to plus one. So it will be within this range. It cannot go beyond minus one. It cannot go beyond plus one. That is, it cannot be less than minus one. It cannot be more than minus one. So that is what it indicates. So therefore, what happens is this equation will be simplified as minus one plus three k by two because minus three k by two is not valid. Minus three k by two will not give you valid result because the angle will be uh, uh, angle uh, this thing whenever you consider it cannot be greater than my uh, lesser than minus one and greater than plus one so for that case what happens is you have only this equation valid for plus condition that is minus one plus three k by two so that is what is written over here okay so when we simplify for phi right which is nothing but cos inverse of this value so here what we obtained, we are obtaining a general equation. So phi, uh, so phi is given by cos inverse of 3k by 2 minus 1. Now what we need to do is we need to identify for what all angles of phi I'll be getting when I substitute different values of k. So now here what we do is you start off with k equal to 0. You start off with k equal to 
zero. When k is equal to zero, what you are getting, you will be getting cos inverse of minus one. So cos inverse of minus one is what? It is actually giving you plus minus 180 degrees. Plus minus 180 degrees. So let that, let that also be there. So for k equal to zero, we are obtaining phi equal to plus minus 180 degrees or we write it as plus minus pi radians. Now uh, when k is equal to one and when we simplify this equation, we are getting phi equal to plus minus 60 degrees. Now when k is equal to two, what we are having, we have cos inverse of three minus one, which is cos inverse of two. And I don't have any cos inverse value when this one is greater than one or if it is less than minus one. So what happens is if you continue, if you continue, if you put k is equal to three, what you have, you have three, uh, three, three, uh, three, 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 nine, nine divided by two, two minus one, that is 4.5 minus one, which will be 3.5. So after this value, what happens is I'll not be having values of phi because this one is greater than one. So now what we had, we had k is equal to zero. For that, we, we can obtain that it is plus minus 180 degrees or plus minus pi radians. Now, what is the problem with this case? So first priority is always given to the peak value or the main, uh, main globe, peak value or the main globe or the maxima. Now, uh, in the previous condition, right here, you could obtain what? you could observe that I am having a maximum already along plus minus 180 degrees. So I should give the priority first to this case. So now uh, what happens, it is because of that only we first identify the maximum. So I got to know that at plus minus 180 degrees, I am having a maximum. But when we solve this equation, right, what we are having is for k equal to zero, we have angle phi which is plus minus 180 degrees or uh, it is plus minus pi radians. But along this direction already maxima is there. So what this implies is for k equal to zero, phi is plus minus 180 degrees along this direction, I cannot have a minima because already I have a maxima which is present over there. Uh, so in rest of the angles, I can have the minima. So now uh, along which direction I am having a minima, since this is invalid because this is cos inverse of minus two, I cannot have cos inverse of minus two. So any values after, after k is equal to two, right? It is all invalid. So only possible condition which remains in this case is, it is phi equal to plus minus 60 degrees. It is phi is equal to plus minus 60 degrees. So now uh, what happens is, what uh, we can uh, look forward is how the pattern will be appearing, how the pattern will be appearing. So now uh, when we plot this, so we have phi equal to zero degrees along this axis and it is equal to 360 degrees. So if I move in this direction, say I'll be counting it as plus uh, phi values. And if I move in the uh, clockwise direction, I'll be considering it as minus. So it is like, if I, uh, if I want to measure this angle, so if I measure it from this side, it is like plus 180 degrees. If I measure it from this side, it is like minus 180 degrees. Okay. So that is what I'll be considering. Now uh, here, what we have. Uh, so here it is specified that I am having major lobe. That is here you can just see. I am having a maximum along plus minus 180 degrees. So what is that? So if I start from phi is equal to zero, where is minus 180? Minus 180 is here. Where is plus 180? Plus 180 is here. So what is this telling? This is telling that only in this direction, I am having a maximum. So a peak value is present over here. A peak value is present over here. Now, where is the side lobe present? If you just observe here, along phi equal to uh, plus minus 60 degrees. I am having a side lobe. I am having a side lobe. So here, uh, what do I get? I get, so if I measure plus 60 degrees and minus 60 degrees along this direction, I'll be having a value 
which will be lesser than this peak value. So this is actually acting as a side low. It is acting as a side low. So now uh, here, if you uh, just observe, uh, I'll, uh, I'm not having any side lobes apart from these two angles. I'm having a minimum along these two angles. Uh, now, apart from this, actually, we need to identify, uh, sorry, uh, I'm having a null in this direction. Sorry, I'm specifying it as side loops. Uh, sorry, uh, please uh, rectify that. So it is plus minus 60 degrees. I am having a null. I am having a null. So this equation is for identifying the null. So the method remains same. So when we obtain along plus minus 60 degrees, I am having a null value. So actually what uh, they have drawn over here is, it should not be like this. It should be like this. It should be like this. What they have drawn, there, there should not be any field present over here. It should be a null value. Okay. So here, how do I obtain this? So here it is along the 60 degrees. And what happens is I am having a null in these two directions. And if you uh, just observe, I don't have any other parameters over there. So what happens is I'll be having a pattern which is represented over here. Now, how do I obtain the beam width between first null? So that, that was the other question. So this is the radiation pattern what you have plotted. I want the, uh, I want the beam width between first null. So we have to consider the major lobe always. We have to consider the major lobe always. So when we consider the major lobe, right? What we have is uh, we have the first nulls. So here you can observe that at any other angle, I'm not having any null. So in uh, different problems, we can just observe this. So phi is equal to 60 and minus 60, I am having the null. So if you just measure the angle between this, that is you have to consider the major lobe. If you measure the angle between these two, you will be having the beam width between the first null. So from this 60 degrees, you try to measure this angle. So this angle will be nothing but, so the difference between these two is 120. So the rest of the angle is how much? 360 minus 120. So you'll be getting that parameter, which is 240. So therefore beam width between first null is 240 degrees. And what about the half power beam width? Uh, since uh, it is difficult to estimate for this given condition, uh, generally we approximate half power beam width, which is nearly equal to half that of the beam width between first null. So we'll be having 120 degrees. Anything? Uh